Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to, to speak about uh, a question that people asked me before. Uh, what is the best chest exercise? Everybody is actually, like when I was given a seminar uh, one time, as I was talking about certain training, and the audience were, a lot of them were trainers, physiotherapists, chiropractors, and bodybuilders as well. So with a huge crowd, and uh, late in the afternoon, and so almost everybody was basically trying to catch up their energy. So in order to get everybody attention, to get all of their attention for the, 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 the seminar, I put a question. I said, uh, when you walk into the gym, which is the most exercise that you like to do? Everybody raise a hand. Bench press, chest press, bench press, chest exercise. Thank you. And I asked a question, which is the exercise that you don't really think about or you don't want to do as you walk into the gym door. Everybody raise their hand, squat, 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 leg train. But basically, it's a misunderstanding to how these things are because we're going with certain old dogmas and ideas. Of course, legs are half of your body. And when you're in bodybuilding and you're posing, you have to show the entire leg. Like if I'm going to a competition to Mr. Olympia, if you look at me, and I'm going with a short like this, of course, I look really ridiculous. I want to show my quads. I want to show those big calves to people. So bodybuilding is a complete show. It's about perfection. It's about proportions, it's about balance. And unfortunately, a lot of top bodybuilders in later years, I don't know who lets them get away with it, but they continue to be given titles to win a competition, whereas they have no calves, very poor. It doesn't show that they ever made any effort to train their calves or even examine it medically to see what's wrong with it or ask some, some, some specialist, no. So we're seeing imbalances happening in bodybuilding these days. Uh, I'm gonna, speaking about bodybuilding, I have to let everyone know that bodybuilding is not a sport. And please don't be shocked about that. We're not a sport. We are what you call a sporting activity. We train with the chest press to be very good at it. You're not required to do it anywhere outside the gym. We train on a chin-up bar. A chin-up bar or pull-ups may be useful for some military use, or people in military use it. Uh, Pull-down, uh, lateral raise, uh, and a lot of these things, a lot of, uh, so exercise and bodybuilding is basically located in the gym. So it's a sporting activity. We don't have the element of competition, like weightlifting. I came from weightlifting school. If you lift 100 kilograms overhead, you have the referee and head judge, they see or see your arm, done with. But with bodybuilding, you have a set of judges and you could have another five or different six, six sets of judges, judges behind them and given different results based on how I look and how my performance is and how my skin tone, how is my posing and how all that. So it's very subjective to basically just like figure skating. So it's not a sport. And we'll think even I am at the top of my game and a lot of people may object to that, but we have to be realistic. We're not a sport in terms that you have something to race with. They make us think that you have a sport, they give you the mandatory round and the mandatory poses and the pose down and what have you. Similar stuff like figure skating as well. What the big difference between us and figure skaters. So uh, bodybuilding is an activity that is used in different sports. So today's athletes in tennis, basketball, you name it, choose any sport. They do bodybuilding exercises. Not because they want to be Mr. Olympia. They could be a lot better, like they look much better than a lot of the guys. No, but because they want to really gain certain strength or certain momentum to their uh, 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 sport. Again, by the same token, a lot of exercises in bodybuilding have been kept for a long while very much like in the front race. Uh, naturally, the anterior delt has been working from day one. As we start walking, we move our hand like that. 
But the only part that is neglected from our shoulder is the lateral movement. So we need to really focus more on that. We need not to worry about here or overhead press unless you're a weightlifting is specific. We need to worry more about the lateral raise because naturally we have very little use for the lateral part of the shoulders. We don't walk like this. We walk like that. So basically we need to really focus on these areas. So these are the imbalances that you and I may actually see in bodybuilding. Uh, I, I don't mean to be critical, but I just wanted to really grab your attention as an eye opener to what's around so you can actually look at things again with a different scope. Uh, it's the same like people who are around bodybuilding. You have a lot of bodybuilding trainers and officials uh, who are basically have a belly start from here until there and they tell you, oh, I was in bodybuilding. Well, you don't look like a bodybuilder. I mean, what kind of message are you sending to the young guys who are starting? By the time you become 40, that's what you're going to be like? It's not good. So if you were, if you're in an area, my friends, if you're in an area and you have some officials or trainers who look like that, first of all, before we get uh, really aggressive on them and attack them, uh, find out if they have a medical problem. Maybe they have a medical problem. Maybe have a, a bad eating habit problem. We can advise them. Uh, but definitely between us, this is not the look that you want for bodybuilding. Like a bunch of years back, I went to New York City to do some posing for Joe Weider. And I wasn't really, I was like after I finished competition. So I was in very good shape, trained hard. So I met some uh, people who competed with me in the 80s, some bodybuilders from New York. They had like big belly like these, look terrible, you know, look like they aged 100 years. And then they asked me, oh my God, how come you stay in good shape? How come, how come? I said, yeah, because I do bodybuilding and I follow what bodybuilding tells me and I train, you know. I give example to all the young guys, you know, you can adapt to what you learn. This is what you learn from bodybuilding. Oh, we're sorry, we're married, we have kids. I said, well, that's not an excuse. A lot of people have kids. A lot of people have problems. So I told them, said, well, shame on you. You know, you got to take care of your health. So the following year when I met them, they were in perfect shape. I said, well, good for you. Not to impress me, but for yourself. So it's the same thing for bodybuilding. We have to really be cautious about all these things. We have a lot of contradictions around bodybuilding, you know, between officials and trainers and all that sort of stuff. So we need to really go over these things and be friendly when we talk about it and advise people about it and encourage people to make corrections. So the one exercise that I wanted to finish with today is the inclined chest press that uh, uh, perhaps is the most biomechanically correct exercise for the chest because the orientation of the pectoralis group on the rib cage is more of a slanted because the rib cage, if you look in the rib cage pictures in anatomy books, it is not a box. It's kind of slanted from the front like that. So there is an angle where the pectoralis actually is layered on it. So that angle resembles that little angle here. So when you lie down on the bench, do your chest press, your arm will be in a perfect vertical line with uh, the, the, the muscle itself. So the moment arm is in vertical position directly on top of the muscle there, and then you have a beautiful alignment and work for the entire chest area. So taking the dumbbells, we we'll go on that, and this is a favorable here. So I'm really tilting around so you can actually see the movement, very lightweight, so you can see my face. Sometimes I move my head up, sometimes I keep it down, but you can actually maintain your support. Coming down, almost there, I try to keep my elbow level with my shoulder and push back. For some orthopedic reasons, would like to really keep the elbow there. I'm not of that idea where people really try to really stretch down too much because you're creating a lot of extension on the anterior delt, and it's not really the deltoid at the, the shoulder, at the chest itself. So you're working more on the shoulders when you pull your elbow down. So you need to stop here, you still get the recruitment, and you push back up again. And with this, I wish you the best, and please continue to give me your support, subscribe, and give like, and please share the video with all your friends and loved ones, and tell them to follow us here for our forum here and send me your comments I'll be very happy to when I get the time with it as much as I can to respond and if you have uh, uh, any questions you can actually send it over and we'll be very happy to look at it and until next time 
Take care. Be safe.